Hi everyone, welcome to this video. It's a bit of a different one for me because I haven't ever done a stationery haul before, but Stationery Pal reached out to me and offered to send me some goodies. And how could I say no when I saw their website? They had all the stuff that I love and adore. And so I chose some things that are in this box and I thought I'd open it with you. <laughs> Let's get started, see what's inside. Cute little sticker. Oh, there's a four on it. They must be four years old. Oh, this is like a little gift. Oh, that's so sweet. A sweet little letter in there. That's nice. And then, oh, look at this. It's like a party. It's a party in a box. This guy has been partying. Oh, it's a little stamp. Wow. Okay, let's put these little guys aside. Move all these worms out the way. Oh my gosh. Oh, exciting stuff. Okay, what have I got? So the first thing I'm pulling out of the box is the Zebra Mild Liners. I've been wanting to try these liners for so long and I never realized that they came in brush tips. So I pretty much went writing and calligraphy crazy in this box. And this was one of the things that I think will be so cool to have for my calligraphy. Oh, this is the watercolor paper that I was dying to try. It's 100% cotton, acid-free, 300 GSM um, thickness. So I didn't realize they were this small, but I'm kind of glad they are because that means now I can do an actual watercolor painting on it, stick it straight into my bullet journal or sketchbook or frame it. I reckon they're probably frameable sizes. So that's very cool. i move this slightly out of the way. Um, okay, so what's next? We've got... This is the, I'm going to try and pronounce it, the Fudabiori Metallic, oh, it's by Kurotake, and it's a gold, um, gold brush pen. So we'll try that out soon. I was running out of these, so I thought I took the opportunity to ask for some. <laughs> they are the Pigma Microns that I always use. This is the O1, and this one is a thicker one. Oh, this was a cool, this is just a turquoise colored pen, but I like drawing in pen sometimes and I don't have any colored pens like colored ink pens so I thought I would grab some of those and I got a cool bl sky blue color as well so I can't wait to test those out and then oh this was the pink pencil oh my gosh you won't be able to see this right now but this is pink lead I can't contain my excitement to draw with this <laughs> I have to try it right now oh <gasps> it's pink Oh my gosh, and then the creepiest face on the planet has been drawn. Okay, so we'll do a proper drawing with that later. But yes, you see my excitement. So pink pencil. Then we've got the another Pilot Juice, which is a gel pen in an orange color. And then these are my favorites. I swear by these, the Uniball Signo Broad white gel pens. And then my other personal fave, cannot go past the Uniball Signo Broad Gold Metallic gel pen. I use that all the time in my bullet journal setups. And then these look like my Funusuke. Oh yeah, there it is. Hard tip. So these are the hard tip ones, which I quite like. Um, the soft brush tips are probably a little bit easier to control, but um, I like the hard tip for some reason. And then this is something I wanted to try. This is by Zig. It's called a clean color FB but it's by Kuretake again, and they're water-based dye ink and it's brush tip. I pretty much wanted to try as many brush tips as I could because I'm doing a lot of calligraphy lately and I just want to explore that. Oh, this I'm super excited to try. This is the Mono Zero Eraser and it is like, like super skinny. So 2.3 mils is the little dot size. So I'll be able to do little fine eraserings. Eraserings, that is not a word. Erasings is all that's needed. Some more microns. I got the blue one. I got a green one. I got another black one. I got a black gel pen. I didn't realize I asked for a black gel pen, but there you go. I'm happy to accept it. <laughs> and then, oh, this one I did ask for. This is a dark red. I love this color. It looks like grapes and wine. And then I've got a couple more of those Zig ones. I think I'm sorted for pens for a while. And then, Okay, this is all pens. I do apologize that this stationery haul is all pens. This is what I use. I went for a brown pen and a pink pen. And then, this is a cat ball. <laughs> oh, 
That's so funny. Um, and then the last one was a gray pen, a little, oh, that's cute. A little clip. I could definitely use that on my bullet journal. Another little clip. They are super handy, actually. Cute. Party in there. I'm afraid, I'm sad to throw that away. Do you know what? I'm not going to. I'm gonna give that to my kids. They can maybe make some craft with this stuff. And now, so that this video isn't just a me unboxing a little party, I'm going to create some stuff with it. Give you a few little first impressions of a few of these things that I ordered. So stick around if you wanna see what I create. Okay guys, so I have been gone for about five minutes. I've cleared off my desk, made myself a cup of tea and got my sketchbook. So I was thinking about what I would like to do for testing these pens out. And because I've got so many pens and I love drawing faces, I've always wanted to do the 100 heads challenge and I've never even looked at the Pinterest um, page that has all the references on it. But I have watched a couple of videos. I love drawing with waffles and she did a 100 heads challenge a while back, I think, but I just, I know that it's the right um, Pinterest page that I found because I saw a couple of the, the clay sculpture heads that she drew on there. So I know I'm on the right path. All I did was type in 100 heads challenge and it went to the Pinterest page and it came up with a bunch of references and they've got numbers on them. So I'll put that on the screen so you see what I'm working from, but I thought I would just go for it. Oh, and what I did for this is I, just went to the Pinterest page that had 100 heads on it and then just went through and chose 10 random heads that just I just was inspired by. I just felt like they'd be a good drawing and I just wanted to draw them. So I'm going to start with the thing that I've been the most excited to try and that is <laughs> this pencil. So although this is not a pen, this is probably the only pencil I'm going to be using. So I might start just warming up with this pencil instead. Okay, so starting with reference one using this beautiful Pilot Color Eno 0.7 mil pink mechanical pencil. Very exciting. Uh, so while I'm doing this, I just thought I'd mention that Stationery Pal have given me a unique discount code for my subscribers to use. So if you do want to order anything from the Stationery Pal website, they have a lot on there and it's quite mind boggling at how many options there are. Um, so yeah, check it out. And if you want to order anything, just use the discount code Torren Marie and you'll get 12% off of your purchase. The link to their website is down in the description box. Now straight off, what I'm already loving about this pencil is the fact that it is erasable. It's got an eraser on the end. So I can just erase a bit of that away. That's cool. So these are like those color erase pencils, but it's kind of nice having it in a mechanical pencil. Therefore, I never have to sharpen it. Now I'm not really used to sketching just for the sake of sketching. <laughs> At the moment, for the last couple of years, because of the channel, I find everything I sketch or um, draw sort of has a purpose. And I guess this has a purpose as well because it is going to be on my channel, but it feels really nice to just choose to do this challenge just because I want to. You know, I'm just gonna, I just wanna sketch some heads. So that is quite enjoyable. And I'm feeling a little bit uh, like I really need to warm up and practice because this just feels very foreign to me. I think sketching in pink is maybe what's throwing me off, but we'll get there. Just takes a little while to warm up. And speaking of warm, I'm actually freezing right now because it's just started to get chilly here in Perth, Australia. And we're going into autumn autumn so what are we day oh what are we we're almost a full month in we're almost a full month into autumn and it's just starting to get cold it's still been cracking hot all the other days oh do you know what i want to try out the mono eraser see how skinny he is so lovely yeah completely pointless right now when it's about the same size as this but that's okay Mm. That's going to be awesome on graphite and charcoal. If you do charcoal drawings, having a skinny eraser like that would be very, very handy. 
Now, I suppose I could talk a little bit about my technique of drawing faces. I really don't know if I follow any particular way of doing it. Um, I mostly just guess and erase a lot until the proportions look right to me. Um, I do sometimes do the whole circle with the, you know, the cross through the center to show you guidelines. Um, but often that fails me even. I think it's just that I haven't stuck to one particular technique for long enough for it to actually work every time. So yeah, I'm still, I'm still learning because there's just so many ways to do things. So many different um, supplies and how to work with something and how to achieve a different result, um, the same result a different way. So that's what I'm thinking. Okay, so here, so for example, this, this chin down here, I sort of did an oval to estimate like the size of the space that we're looking at. And then I'll just add a little bit of shading. She's got some shading down here in her jaw. I liked all these references, has awesome lighting things going on. That was kind of like one of the main things I'm interested in. Got to remember that this is just a sketch too. Sometimes I get, um, I could probably never do one of those challenges where it has to be, you know, 100, 100 heads in, you know, a couple of days or whatever they do it in because I get so bogged down by details, like very easily. Just adding this cool head scarf. And I think I'm ready to move to the pen, pen sketches now that I'm kind of warmed up and not feeling as <laughs> lost. Now I got an idea from another artist on YouTube called Chris Hong and I saw her once create illustrations using highlighter first, so using texture or marker and then going in with your pen because um, it's a little more freeing because you haven't got that really strong line to start with. So let's try and build up to the pen action. And we'll start with this, oh look how light that is, that's awesome. So I'm basically trying to look at the shapes on his face and see where I can place them in relation to other things. Everything I do is like in relation to something else that I feel looks right. So I feel like, you know, the ears are kind of in line, they're sort of on an angle. So trying to keep everything following that angle. She's got an eyeball here, but it's smaller than the other one. This character, this face is really interesting. So Hopefully it shouldn't matter anyway if it's not accurate because it's got like such an animated, characterized, caricature expression. See, now I've got down to the bottom and I realized his chin needs to be even longer, but it's cool because it's a nice light shade, so it's not a problem. Sort of roughly right, I think. Now that I've done that part, let's use one of the pens. Maybe I'll try orange Stick with the color theme that we got going on. So this pen I'm using is called a Pilot Juice Pen and they're gel pens. So I think the gel isn't working that great on my sketchbook, but I've tried them on normal paper and they work really well. So I'm not going to rate it against that. I love having different colored pens to work with. I haven't used many in the past. So it's a bit of a bit of a novelty right now. This guy's features are so much fun to draw. Oh, I completely forgot about his monocle that he's got. He's got a big circle monocle. Is that what they're called? A lot of this is guesswork, but it's really good having those 
marker strokes down first because then as you're drawing you can kind of see where it's roughly going to go and then you know just adjust if you need to. I like that style of um, drawing. It's pretty cool. Okay, I think that will do for this guy. All right, that was fun. Okay, next guy. So I'm thinking I want to use, should I go for that? Should I, shouldn't I, should I, shouldn't I? Mm -hmm. Yep, all right, I've done it now. Okay, green, we're going green. Green, because her eyes are super cool. Okay, we're going straight in with pen this time. Oh, scary stuff. Lucky it's only my sketchbook. I really want this one to be good for some reason. I just love her face. It's like really interesting and I just want it to be right. So kind of high pressure drawing in pen. <clears throat> Not sure that that's working. I think the proportions are off, but oh well. Her forehead is way too small. I need to bring that up. Okay, I think we're saving it. So now we can start working on some of the details. Now for the fun part, the eyes. I think working with microns when you're sketching is really cool because if you get the really thin ones like this, you can manage to do your base drawing pretty well. It's just any darker areas that you want to colour in, a nightmare to do with a 0.5 nib because um, you need a little bit more thickness. So it'd be cool to have the same colour in the other thicknesses so that you can really do these kind of illustrations. And any shading, press really lightly and you can almost color it without coloring it. I'm just doing like hatching, some cross hatching in areas and then hatching in others. So I'm just building up different values with these lines, changing the direction and the amount. So the more I have in there, it the more it looks like shading. Okay, stop there, Taryn. I have to like pull myself back from keep go from keeping going. Is that a word? Keeping going. See, I can't stop. Urgh. All right, so three down. Actually, I really want to try these out. Maybe I'll try brown. Would that be weird? Hairline around the edge, and this little man bun is up here, quite high. Eyes. Maybe roughly there. See what I mean by complete guesstimation? Should have gone for the yellow. Oh, well, it's okay that this one's going to be crap because I like that one. <laughs> That's the main thing. At least you like one of them. Actually, I like that one too. This chin is in totally the wrong spot. 
what am I going to do here? Oh, I have an idea. I've bought a white pen. I can use the white pen for corrections. So I'm just going to go over his chin that is in the complete wrong spot. Here we go. <laughs> Looks like a weird beard happening, but hopefully it'll dry and we can go over it again. Well, this is nice and handy. Having the other side to sketch in big bits of color. That's awesome. Okay, this one was my trickiest and I think it was the pen is just too dark to do this kind of sketching with unless you're super confident but I think I managed to save it a little bit okay not my favorite not my favorite but I don't hate it with a passion so that's always good okay next one. Oh, another fun one another very fun one I kind of want to do I'm gonna go for black with this one. I'm gonna sketch it out first with this. It's gonna go right across the middle of the spread. Uh-oh, super weird. Kind of wish I did more of this marker idea because that is definitely the safest way to do this. Maybe it's just this face that's so tricky, but oh my gosh. I have uh, definitely made a pickle of this one. Okay, I think we've managed to fix that a little bit more. Phew. Yeah, so these microns are so much fun to draw with. I definitely, you know, would prefer to do pencil in first and then go over with the microns, but this is such good fun practice and it like forces you to be a little bit more free and relaxed. I actually won't put too much because I've got to fit the other heads in. So maybe I'll just do a little bit. Okay, so now that that's all there and I'm kind of happy with it, I'll just chuck her eyeballs in. And then I'm going to go ahead and use my calligraphy pen, or the Tombow Food and Escape. Now these are really cool to do sketches with. Obviously they're awesome for calligraphy, but they're also really cool for line art.
I'm just pressing super lightly to achieve this kind of effect. I sort of didn't want to go too solid black. So I'm just lightly pressing across to try and get some variation in the hair. And because the, te the texture of the paper is kind of rough, it's sort of making that quite easy to achieve. And there's that one. Once again, not my favorite, but it was fun. How many is that? That's five. I've got five more to do, but I've only got space really for, I'm gonna have to go three and two. Okay, so I just had a little lunch break and I'm back with a Milo. And it's time for number six. Um, this time I'm going to use this guy. This is the nicest color. It is that same gel pen as the orange one. It's a pilot juice pen and this is in turquoise green. I'm going to try and be real loose. Okay, we've got eyebrows. Another eyebrow over here. The nose, eyes are deeper set. They're very fearful and afraid eyes. The expression is very obvious. So I want to make sure I try and capture that expression because that must have been what appealed to me when I was choosing these out. I should almost always start with the actual features because that's always the face shape that I get wrong in these quick sort of sketches. Because this angle here, because his head's tilted upwards, we've got some real interesting looking shapes coming. And I don't know that I'm getting them correct. How nice is this color, by the way? I love it. That's one good thing that's happening from forcing myself to work like this. I'm managing to fill an entire spread and I've never, I, oh no, I have, that's a lie. I have used the double spread before like this, but I've never put a face right over the fold. And weirdly, I kind of like it gives the illusion that there's more like space for you to work on. So I've learnt something today. I think the key to this expression is all in this eyeball here. Making sure that the iris has like a touch of white at the top so that it shows you that his eyes are like wide open. Why do boys always get blessed with the beautiful eyelashes? <laughs> Definitely a weird one, that one. Could have been better. Leave that one there. Moving along. Um, might use this awesome berry color for her. Okay, so this girl deliberately has one eye squinting other eye open and then she's got one eyebrow lifted and one eyebrow down. Okay so now I have her forehead and eyes in. I can try and get the rest of the face in the right spot. So I'm lining up once again with the features of the face where I think it might sit. And then the shape of the mouth 
is really cool. So she's biting her lips. So the top lip is almost like an arc. That's about right. And then she's got a very soft face shape. Okay, looks kind of weird. I've definitely made her face too long. So that's a bit of a bummer because I can't really fix that now. Okay, let's try and make her face look a little bit better. Keep making this shorter, just trying to fix the proportions. Not quite working. Super weird. Ba -ba. <laughs> uh. Okay, let's hope the next three can be better. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, now that I've lost my confidence here since the lunch break, I'm gonna go back to the pencil. Or actually, no, the marker was fun. Maybe we'll do the marker again. Let's go with yellow this time. Okay, our next picture is this girl who's very cool. I definitely have lost my mojo since having lunch. <laughs> it's just not working as nicely as I would have liked it to. Her entire face is crooked, which is not ideal. See ya. I don't know how I'm going to fit two faces in here. <laughs> I'm determined to fit 10 in here because that's what I said I would do and I'm annoying like that. I want to stick to what I say. <laughs> Even though I've definitely lost my mojo in these last few. Can I save this by doing another colour on top? I want to see like if orange, if I could tie a few colours together. I was able to kind of like soften that a bit and blend it. This one here, I love it. This is the Kuretake Zig Clean Color FB, but I think because it's so pale, it's really good for like kind of blending. Like you can see how I'm sort of blending that marker out a little bit, which makes it appear much cleaner, like more intentional <laughs> when we know it absolutely wasn't. I want to give this berry one another chance, even if I can just save the eyes and the parts of this drawing in particular, then I will feel happier. This chick has their best eyebrows. So full. We'll try and bring her lips in a touch because we did go a little bit too full on those. I don't know if it's saved, but it's not as bad as it was. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. One thing I do love about this shot is all the freckles over her nose and stuff, so I'll just add a few of those in. I do really want to try this before I get to the other two. 
Okay, so this is the Kuratake uh, Fudabiori Metallic. Okay, I'm definitely going back to the pencil for this next one. Okay, now that I've got the rough guide of where she goes, I'm going to do the rest in pen. Pink pen. Gosh, I don't know what that is. Oh, no. They've definitely gone from bad to worse. <laughs> but I'm testing out so many supplies, so it's all good. All right, last one. Last one is a profile shot. Hopefully I'll be able to fit it in. One is a slight cheat because I'm just doing the profile shot, which is probably the only thing that would fit here anyway. I can feel myself rushing now because it's almost school pickup time. <laughs> it's a shame that I can't fit this thing that's on his head into the picture because that's kind of the reason I chose this reference. I really liked the look of it, but I can't fit it in. And then to finish off this hideous drawing, I'm going to put some of the gold to represent that crazy jewel piece that's on his ear. And then this will be a spread that I don't want to look at for a while. I actually was really happy with it before lunch. So these first five were my favorites. These next five were not so great, but that's okay. At least I was able to test out a bunch of these pens that I got and I'm excited to use them now. I definitely am the most happy with this effect here using a really light marker and then the gel pen over the top. And I'm always a fan of um, just the simple, really thin um, either microns or the gel liners. So yes, I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe it inspired you to get drawing with some pen. It's definitely something that's freeing, sometimes frustrating, but it's definitely worth a try if you wanna just have a go and see how it feels for you. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you Stationery Pal for sending me all these pens, pens galore, and I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you for watching, bye-bye.